Hello, you Forge faithful, you. Welcome to another episode of Focus on Forge. Anthony Urcioli with you. I'll be your host. Uh, a lot coming up. We are going to hear from Daniel Crutzen, who made his long-anticipated season debut for Forge FC after suffering that ACL tear at the end of last year. He made his debut against Cavalry in a win for Forge. Don't think there's much of a coincidence there that uh, Forge got back into their winning ways with Daniel Kurtzen back into the lineup. Uh, may not may not have been the only reason, but certainly uh, a big catalyst for that. So we're going to hear from Daniel. Um, we're going to hear from some of his teammates, Alex Ashenyoti Janssen, who helped hold down the fort on defense during uh, Kurtzen's absence. We'll hear from Garvin Matusala. Someone else that plays in that back line and will be side by side with Daniel Kritzen for uh, much of the remainder of the season, I would guess. And we're also going to check in with Adam Jenkins, color comment, or excuse me, he's the play by play man with One Soccer. If you tune into One Soccer, there is a nine, I've done the math, there is a 99.9999 chance you'll hear Adam Jenkins' voice. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he's the, I'm pretty sure he's the only one working at One Soccer. He's the only one I, I seem to hear all the time. Adam Jenkins knows the CPL like very few, and uh, he's going to join us. Not only are we going to talk Forge, the purpose of Adam's visit will mostly be around, actually, um, I know we're focusing on Forge, but we're going to take a minute to focus on the rest of the league because it's crunch time. We're almost at the playoffs here. Um, Forge, for example, only have five matches left. The, the, most of the league only has four matches left. And then we get into the two-leg semifinal and then the final. So a lot of positioning still up for grabs. So we may as well take a peek at the table. Atletico Ottawa, 41 points. They are in first place. They've played 24 matches. Um, they haven't won in a few, but they've they've had three straight draws after a pair of wins. So Ottawa still being consistent, getting points, playing that low block, that defensive style, and then capitalizing on their opportunities. They're not, there aren't a lot of them, but they're very efficient with their attack. Atletico Ottawa right now in first place, 41 points. Forge in second. They are two points back of Atletico. They do have a match in hand though. So here's what this means. If you are a Forge supporter and if you are listening or watching the Forge Audio Network, I would assume you are a Forge supporter. Um, maybe I shouldn't assume. Maybe you're not. But the most most of you probably are. Um, Forge FC have the highest points percentage in the league. So what this means is Forge, more than any other club, is in control of their final destiny and their final playoff positioning. Forge finishes in first. Again, you guarantee if they make it to a final, they're guaranteed to play that final at home at Tim Hortons Field, which would be incredible um but a long way to go until we get there but first place there's there's a lot there there's a there's a there are a lot of reasons to finish top of the table number one is to secure that home field advantage so forge is in second with 39 points in 23 matches cavalry's played one more match than forge they're one point back after their match last weekend in fourth place valor 36 points Two back of Calvary, their level on matches. And then Pacific, who was knocked out of a playoff spot. They are also at 36 points, so they're tied with Valor, but they played one less match than Valor. And Pacific is who Forge will play Sunday. Um, kickoff time is scheduled for 8 p.m. Eastern time. Forge at Pacific out west. And plenty on the line in that one. We'll have a match day preview for you to make sure we get you fully um, teed up for that contest between those two clubs. First, though, I introduced them already, but it, it, uh, I'll reintroduce Adam Jenkins, the voice of the Canadian Premier League on One Soccer, and he joins us now. All right, Adam Jenkins makes his uh, highly anticipated return <laughs> to the uh, Forge Audio Network. Adam, welcome, and I mean, we could. It didn't matter when we we spoke. Every time we spoke, the yep. table in the CPL looked completely different, and, and it hasn't changed much. Although Ottawa, I mean, are you a little bit surprised that Ottawa has been able to maintain this level? 
this is where I ask myself what level of humility I want to have on this podcast, this show, because, and I have the screenshot, I'm ready to hit send before the season, day one, CPL tweeted, give me your bold predictions for 2022, and I said, Ottawa Valor both make the playoffs, and everyone's laughing at me, and not a chance except for the diehards of each team, so Mm -hmm. it's sitting in my drafts, waiting to hit send in case it makes it. (laughs) I, I genuinely, and it might sound ludicrous, or you may not believe me, and that's your prerogative, I am not surprised by Ottawa in the slightest. I think we have seen an off season from them that we may never see again in the CPL where without twisting the knife on the team from last year, we understand they were bottom of the table. They did it perfectly. They kept the players they needed to keep. They brought in some really exciting serviceable players where the, the offer was simply, we have a great venue. We have great fans and you weren't starting with your club. It, you were doing well, but here are minutes. And there was, that's your Ollie Bassett. That's your Kevin Allen. They were given a chance, even Ingham to a certain extent, not really platooning the net. They brought in the right people. They kept the Beckys and the Acostas and, and the core, and they've just built on it. And Carlos Gonzalez deserves a ton of credit. I shouldn't say this too loud because it's going to upset some Forge fans. He's probably going to win coach of the year. Sorry, Bobby. He's mm-hmm. been that level of excellence. So am I surprised to see them at the top of the table? A little bit, but they could still finish fourth with how tight things are. I'm just not surprised at how they've grabbed that success and ran with it. And, you know, the thing with Ottawa, too, and speaking of Bobby, uh, Forge head coach Bobby Smirniotis talked about this after their last match um, against Cavalry and that, you know, Forge, Cavalry, you have two clubs, maybe two, the two only clubs that are a predominantly attacking club in, in the CPL. And Bobby talked about the, how the fact that if, you know, we want to grow the league, we need more of this. I don't think he was throwing shade at the other clubs and the way they, you know, everyone has their own way of winning. But it is interesting that Ottawa's play, you know, they've, they're they that kind of, if you're talking about a club that plays that, um, that lower block to perfection, I mean, it's Ottawa. And not only is it working, they may finish at the top of the table by year's end playing that style, which says a lot. It does. And it's... M- it's almost most impressive to me that they almost started that way in an intense low block for yeah. half, two thirds of the season. And only in the past couple of weeks to a month have we seen the evolution where they're a little bit more brave. Tiso and Acosta, when they have a fully fit and available team for selection, have no problem getting forward. And that's the next step for them. So I think they recognized this is a big transition in terms of personnel year to year. We need to find a way to stay competitive, stay in games. And now that they've sort of nailed that, And they can always drop back to it if the game requires it. They're getting a little bit more brave. Ollie's getting a bit more brave. Now, they're still lacking some of the finishing. And I I go back to the last match they played that I called where Kevin Alleman had, like, their only really good scoring chance of the game. And he he swerved it away. And, like, those that's the difference between a team that is going to scare you into thinking they are a favorite for the North Star Shield and a team that needs that bit of evolution so yes it's very interesting and it doesn't matter if you want to call it boring if you want to call it defensive whatever you want to call it they're winning they're top of the table if you're a supporter you kind of love it especially the the year-to-year transition but i get where bobby's coming from if and i think it wasn't that subtle one soccer this weekend took advantage or i shouldn't even say take advantage capitalized on the fact that there was no football in the uk with the passing of queen elizabeth ii we already have a contract with them so all of a sudden we're trying to put color commentary on every single broadcast and when mm. we're trying to capture that new audience so yes forging cavalry is a much better hey this is the cpl you should tune in at midnight in norwich um than necessarily defensive style of football but at the end of the day success is the barometer for a lot of clubs and they want to be successful and right now ottawa are yeah, and as much as Forge fans will want um, Forge to overtake Ottawa, of course, to secure a championship final at home if it gets to that point, right. a Forge Cavalry semifinal oh, with please. a home-and-home home could be very <laughs> interesting. And you talk about new fans, neutrals. I mean, this is just – it's been a great season for the league to to introduce itself to new fans because the quality's been there and the parity's been there. And there really – there's no – I mean, you can bring up Edmonton um, at the bottom of the table, but the reality is, I mean, they're in every game, it seems. Yeah. So while they're sitting on 16 points, uh, that doesn't really tell the, the full story. So the league is, has been – the quality's been there this season from top to bottom. Yeah, it's been it's been the league's best season. It's not particularly close. And I think – with all of the hype about a regular season, like a regular season in terms of mostly one, two matches a week, depending on 
COVID shutdowns and CONCACAF league reschedules. But for the most part, they know that there's time to prepare for an opponent. And you're getting a lot more even because there's more time to scout, there's more time to prepare, there's more off time for bodies to recover. And while the league is still far from perfect, this is as close to perfect as it's been yet. And you're right, Cavalry Forge two matches would be sensational. The downside is that it wouldn't be for a potential final because I think that would really bring out the best in both teams. But the final is only a one match winner take all. So give me give me two matches of Forge and Cavalry and then I'll take whomever is in the other semifinal and it would be wonderful. I think that's that would be the best advert for the team. The downside is if you don't get through, you're not playing for a championship. So it's like going all in a bit earlier in a game of poker than you probably should. But I think it would be great. Do you think, is there a club right now who you think is at that point where they're going to finish out the season and then just kind of scrap it and rebuild going into next season? Maybe some of the clubs that will likely miss out on the postseason this year? Yeah, the the scrap it and rebuild is tricky because I think that's easier said than done. I would have said a month ago or even a few weeks before the roster freeze kicked in at the beginning of the month that Halifax seemed that club. And I think the supporters are, are one of the, the, the most vocal supporters are really driving that. But the pieces they've sort of brought in the past little while, your Campanias, your Escobars, give me more belief that it won't be a full rebuild. Now, the offense mm-hmm. needs a complete overhaul. And, and I don't say this to sort of slam on any of, of the forwards, but mm-hmm. I don't know that there's anyone not named Sam Salter and Joao Morelli that stay. Like, I just don't think it's been good enough. Like, uh, Ludwig Kojo Amla has been fine. Bumpa Mondwe has been fine. And it's that's up to the coaches. Do they work hard in training? Do they see that evolution? Do they think they fit? Um, those people who, and I don't have contracts off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure it's just Morelli and then the newcomers that have next year guaranteed. But I don't know how you come back with Akeem Garcia and Alex Marshall because they just haven't been good enough for what Halifax demands as a market. They're the only team I think that is definite rebuild. And then Edmonton's the wild card because we don't know about ownership. So Mm -hmm. if they come in with a new owner and all of the loaned players go back at the end of the year, nobody really knows what happens with them. If players decide they want to keep them for next season or, or what it will look like maybe and, and knock on wood because, and I'm saying this and I don't know that it's the same situation this year where the other owners are kind of rallying to help keep them afloat and hope next year or early next season is when that ownership is done. That really depends. So it could just be another, we're keeping two guys and starting from scratch with more loans and new local signings again. I hope for Alan's case, that's not what happens. And and I would like to be optimistic that with how the league's projecting that it shouldn't be that tough of a sell to get someone in that market, mm. the oldest market. Yes, they need a new stadium or they need to, to update or upgrade that game day environment. But those two clubs, Edmonton and Halifax, I don't think York, if they come up short, which they likely will mathematically, need mm-hmm. to do much. Because if they had this team at the beginning of the year, they might even be like a, a third seed. They've been that good recently. And then the Valor, if they don't quite make it, that's a curious one. You don't know what happens with their lone players. Sirwa's probably gone. Yes, he looks like the guy. Um, Rhea, it, it all depends on if there's a fit for him in the in the CF Montreal first team and or what they want to do with him. But... I also think that Valor could make the playoffs and surprise people. And then you all mm-hmm. of a sudden you're saying, no, we have to keep everything together. This is perfect. Or this is as close to perfect as we've been. Let's not tinker with it too much. So yes, we're like, what is it? Five weeks, Anthony away from the mm-hmm. end of the regular season, but yeah. there's still so much to be decided that it, it's tough to make those 2023 prognostications right now. Yeah. And, and I love it. And, and, you know, I was, I was actually embarrassed to admit um, after the last forge match that I, I almost forgot how good Daniel Critson was. Yeah. Um, I took in the first half at field level because I like standing behind Bobby and listening to him <laughs> d- during the match. It, it's you know, watch him stroke his beard up close. It's it's the best, <laughs> and and I I learn I learn more in that <laughs> forty five minutes than, right. than you'll ever learn. Um, but j- just watching that and watching him, it's it's everything. It's him on the ball, away from the ball. It's his presence alone brought, and you know, Forge would have maybe won that game without Kurtz and it's not, I don't know that he was necessarily the X factor, but they did just look a lot different with him in the lineup. How big is that return for forge? 
Yeah, here's another one. Me going back to my preseason predictions. I think I might have I might have mentioned this on the broadcast, but they almost all blend together. There's so many in quick succession. But mm-hmm. I had Danny as my defensive player of the year shout before the season started when they asked for our awards. And I'm sure you know, uh, working with the club, that they keep the the injury statuses pretty close to the chest. So I'm like, oh, he'll be out for a month or two. This won't <laughs> be a problem. He'll come back, take the league by storm. DPOY locked and he's gonna have five weeks of the regular season and then a playoff push assuming forge get in i don't want to assume anything here um but they they are a significantly better team with him there he is i I think i like what bobby said the most where there's just nobody like him there isn't a center back in the cpl with his profile with his aggression um christian jack might single-handedly get his canadian eligibility and get him in the canadian pool which i'm sure many supporters would be happy about constantly asking about the passport he's that good of a player um, I think with uh, a season where he didn't play as many games, it might be tough for him to move. But you see what Joel Waterman's doing for CF Montreal. Lucas right. McNaughton's been very serviceable for TFC this year. Daniel Kurtzen can hold his own with those two players. So at some point, he is going to go, whether that is Major League Soccer and the Canadian permanent residency would help that significantly. He's that good. And I think you're at the point with Forge where you're not really asking questions about the back um, that's how solid they are. It's it's the other two areas of the pitch that still have a bit of finessing to do in these in these final few matches. But you're you're not asking questions about their backline anymore. He, and and having Danny there just makes it that much more short up. Absolutely. And uh, lastly, that that play out Pacific Valor battling it out for that fourth spot and i mean really we're what five points are separating first to to five so it might not be both could make it i mean Mm -hmm. that's possible as well um i thought valor was done i mean that that was my mistake because they 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 went on a tear they're they're very much in the picture and with what we're seeing week to week anyone can beat anybody so it's almost impossible to make a you know blanketed hey this team's gonna make it this is team's gonna get in but if you and I know you're you you are a play by play man, so it's, um, let's say predictions aren't always um, under your <laughs> umbrella of duties. But let's let's put it this way: which sure. club do you think could do more damage in the postseason, Valor or Pacific? Ooh, I love how that's phrased. Mm. Pacific having been there before makes me think that they could they'd have a a likelier chance, but Valor and Ottawa both are right up there with, if I'm an opposing team, I don't want to see either of them. When that's with all due respect to Cavalry and Forge, who you can almost safely assume that they'll be able to finish strong. I think you would rather see a known commodity that you know what they're going to bring you Mm -hmm. than see a, a Valor or an Ottawa in the playoffs. The IG field with, just how big it is and the way it's set up. And and it's kind of like Tim Hortons field with the raised lowest level of seating. It doesn't get the credit it deserves for how loud the supporters are, how smart the supporters are and how they know when to be a factor. And with how well Valor has been playing at home, let's say team a draws Valor in the leg in leg one of the playoffs. I don't know that you're expecting to come out of there with anything more than a one nil loss or like a gritty nil nil. Like that's, Mm. it's tough to play at IG field and get your results. Forge will obviously remember that. So I don't know that you want to see Valor. Pacific is the the most interesting one because Manny comes back for the match against Forge. They lose a mirror for accumulation. They could win out the rest of the season. Wouldn't surprise me. They could lose Two games in a row, win one, two more, and they're done. Wouldn't surprise me either. Like That's how much fluctuation there is with that team right now because they just don't have that number nine. Brown's not been fully integrated yet. He's not fully fit yet. But again, he comes back. Yes, Sean Young's been amazing. I mean, I'll take Bustos and Hurt any day. If you can get one of Daniels or Brown into fitness, I don't know that I want to play Pacific either. And all of this, Anthony, just harkens back to you saying the parity this year is so intense. I want to say, too, I refuse to, to knock... York out of talk for the playoffs until they are out. Like they, they, they're winning three, one pretty much. They're scoring three goals a game all the way through. They're getting the stops they need from Elias Maris. Maybe Nico Giantsopoulos comes back and pushes them for a bit more. I refuse to assume that, that York is out of this. I don't think Halifax has the, the, the schedule, the form to get there, but I do think that this is a six team race still for the playoffs. And that's what makes the predictions near impossible for me. Interesting. All right. Can, so, can I can I take your job for a second and flip you, it? Do it. 
Okay. So as as a someone who works for the club and yes. obviously lives and breathes Forge, who would you least want to see in a two leg? Is it Cavalry or is it one of these potential wild cards? I would say Cavalry only because I coming out of a home and home against, I mean, I don't know who would be left after that, <laughs> after what we've seen because That's it's just a very good point. These players they can't con- they just can't seem to contain their and you know, they say the right things. You know, it's not a rivalry. There's no hate here. But yeah. when they step on the pitch, I mean, it's very evident. These are two clubs that do not like each other in the context of the game action. Mm. And I, you might end up, you know, if you're Ottawa or Valor or Pacific and you play Forge or Calvary in the final, I don't know. You know, we don't. Are players going to be left? Are are um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like a hockey series where one team yeah. plays that, you know, seven game tough series and then there's nothing left for the next one. So yeah. I think Calvary's still the club that would give me the most worry. But okay. well, but I mean, look, Ottawa's beaten Forge this year, Valor beat them twice. It's it's the nature of the league and it's and it's what makes it exciting. So I'm not I'm not complaining. And match of the week this weekend, Forge Pacific could very well be that two legged semifinal preview. So yeah. that that would be fun too with with how the first match of the year went for Forge. Not well. Yes. And with the final last year, which would still be fresh. So yeah, I, like I think as for me, as the neutral who loves all of his clubs equally, I, I'm just excited to know that yeah. the next six weeks, I think, or maybe even seven weeks, because the, the final is like the second to last. It doesn't really matter. I'm just excited at the prospect of how good the games are going to be and mm-hmm. that we still have seven teams mathematically in contention. It rules. It really does. Yeah. Adam Jenkins, I would ask you where we can hear you, but you pretty much just have to turn on one soccer and Adam yeah. Jenkins will appear. He's like, you just, it's like Beetlejuice. It might be from the Island Games. It might be from goals of the month from last year, but there's a chance, there's a chance it's me. So it I apologize be. if I'm not your cup of tea. Otherwise, you're welcome, I guess. Adam's voice is in my head 24-7. It's, it's, it's not the worst thing. I'm not, it's hey, not a complaint. I, I, I will take that as mostly a compliment. So thank you. I, that, that was the intention. All right, Adam, thanks a lot. Cheers, Anthony. All right, there is Adam Jenkins. Now, uh, we discussed Daniel Crutzen a bit. I was fortunate enough to uh, catch up with Daniel this week, just after training at uh, Forge's facilities there at Tim Hortons Field. And we talked about the injury, the road back, and um, his role with the club going forward. Uh, I feel amazing, to be honest. Um, yeah, it was, it was great to be back in the field with the boys. Uh, physically, felt great. I feel, feel fine. We had two days off. So I had some uh, had some time to take some rest. So yeah, I feel pretty good. Uh, Bobby's talked about the versatility of this team even before the season started, and early on uh, the club needed it. Guys like Alex, you know, playing center back. Just watching this club during your absence and seeing guys step up and play various positions it has to be a pretty good feeling knowing you're coming back to to this club. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. It, it's good to see that we have we have twenty twenty three guys on the roster that can step in at any point. Uh, I think Bobby's always said that too, that, that that's the goal of this club, to have 23 players that compete for spots. And, and if someone falls out or gets injured, there's always a, always that next guy. Um, and I think we show that for the for the past nine months. Uh, it's been a long road for you. I, maybe you don't want to remember it, but if you do go back to that that moment when, was there a moment when you got hurt where you were like, oh no, this, this feels serious and what was kind of going through your head? Um, yeah, I don't know. It went all pretty fast. Uh, I think I went down um, that day and, and went into the locker room and I remember the doctor saw me and immediately was like, yeah, I think it's, it's not, not that great um, news. Um, he said probably an ACL tear right away. So yeah, you start thinking uh, a whole lot of things, but uh, at the end of the day, you just take it day by day. And um, yeah, at first I was waiting for those MRI results. Um, once they came back and confirmed that it was the ACL, uh, yeah, you just you just realize it's a long process to get back into it. And uh, yeah, you just take it day by day. Uh, yeah, t- tell us about that that process. I mean, what was the rehab like? The, just that entire, I mean, how long has it been? Like eight months, nine months now? Um, what was that journey like? Uh, it was tough, definitely not not easy, uh, especially in the beginning. Um, I think the first two weeks after surgery, uh, I couldn't bear I could I could barely move. Um, I had to stay in bed basically the whole day. Um, my mom came over from Belgium to help out, um, so that was mentally, physically pretty tough. Um, but then once you get back into it with the boys every day, um, you, you you work in the gym, you go out on the field and stay with the boys every day, and uh, yeah, there's ups and downs throughout the whole process. Um, but as I said, it's just day by day. And if you just take it that way, then it's just uh, it's an easy process uh, in the long run. You know, a guy that had to step in for Daniel during his absence was uh, Alex Ashton Yoda Janssen. You know, the ongoing joke was that 
He didn't like being called a center back because he was just kind of filling in um, and doing a fantastic job, by the way. I mean, he, he wouldn't be getting those the starts that he did if he was not, because certainly there were there were other options. Uh, but they went with the natural midfielder, the natural defensive midfielder, Alex Hesh and Yodi Janssen. Playing center back, and uh, last match he was back at his regular position in midfield. I caught up with Alex this week, and we talked about the impressive 75-minute performance of Daniel Crutzen in his return after a long layoff. Yeah, no, he's he's a fantastic player. You could see right when he came came in the the stature he has on the ball, and like uh, the way he controls the the back line. It's it's a bit what we've been uh, we've been missing this year. Uh, so now you can tell how how important he is to the team, really. All right, and another guy impacted by the absence and now returned by Daniel Crutzen, his teammate on the back line, Garvin Matusala. Uh, you've been training for, for the past two, three weeks, and you could see right away that he was, it's like he never left. And uh, we, we all saw it on, on Saturday that it's like he never left and he just was so in the game and good in his tackle, good in his, uh, in his passing. So I'm so happy for him. Um, you've dealt with injuries yourself. Take us into that mindset because, I mean, it's scary, not just because of your health, but there, there's a lot at stake. I mean, it's your livelihood. It's You have goals that you've been working toward. And when a serious injury happens, is is that one of those scary moments mentally as well? Yeah, for sure. I think it's harder mentally than, than physically, especially when you're, you're in your first sessions, your first sessions back. Uh, just to get back in the groove and everything, you sometimes you're kind of skeptical of making certain movements. So the hardest part is for sure mental, mentally, but uh, uh, with time it all, everything like comes back. So uh, yeah. But, but even during the like uh, you know the mental health part of it, it's it's you feel pretty down, right? You, you can't and you can't you have no control over it as well. Is it scary in that sense as well? Yeah, because uh, you, like you said, you have no control. So you especially on like like his injury, a knee injury takes a while and sometimes you can't feel good and the next day it might be bad so the hardest thing is really mental and because you really can't do anything about it but here the thing I like is you have your teammates around that help you keep them that, that mental strong so that helped that in my case that helped me a lot all right Forge fans that was your focus and now that you're focused stay tuned however wherever you get your Forge content whether it's through podcast social media YouTube uh, you can subscribe and um, also at forgefc.ca. Plenty more content coming up. As mentioned, the full match day preview will drop very soon as we get you ready for Pacific and Forge and also uh, three keys to the match, which will be followed after the match by the match in review. So plenty of reason to subscribe and listen. I'm Anthony Urcioli. We'll talk to you soon. and focus on Forge. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts to the Forge Audio Network.